Hey guys, I'm currently on the Fusion page. Today we're going to talk about the multi-poly node, which you can find right next to B-Spline. So with that being said, let's just bring it in. And it works very much like the multi-merge node in the sense that it allows you to group multiple mask nodes into just one node. Now speaking of mask nodes, there are two types of mask nodes that you can use with a multi-poly. Polygon and B-Spline. Now the main difference between the two really comes down to the fact that Polygon allows you to create shapes uh, with sharp edges by default as opposed to B-spline which gives you smooth edges. So all that means is that we can now use different masks to create different shapes all within just one node. Now by default the system gives us a polygon mask node to start with so we're just going to quickly draw up a line on the screen here and then bring up the border width a little bit there and then uh, in order to create a new mask we can simply click on either polygon or B spline next to add poly. For the sake of this demonstration I'm going to just go with polygon uh, here and then create another uh, poly line on the screen. I'll bring up the border width and now I'm going to do this one more time by adding one more uh, mask node here. And then uh, again, I'm just going to draw a line, bring up the border width. Now you can also create a new mask by taking advantage of an existing one. So what we can do is just select a mask that you want to uh, use and then simply right click and then in the menu select duplicate. So this will allow you to create an identical copy. So, uh, you know, this is another quick way to create a new mask by by piggybacking off of existing one. So another thing we can do here is to right click and then in the menu select rename. This will allow you to change the name of that particular mask. So I'm just going to quickly do this for all the three masks that I got here. Now one thing you're going to notice is that the oldest mask is by default sitting at the bottom of this list while the newest mask is at the top of the list. But you can simply drag this node to anywhere uh, in the list if you don't like the default order. Now the reason why this matters is that certain options operations here are affected by the order of the nodes. So if we look at the configuration setting here at the bottom, most of them remain the same as what you see in Polygon and the B-Spline, but paint mode setting in particular is quite sensitive to the order of masks. Okay, so to demonstrate, I am going to come to mask two, the one in the middle, and then we're going to change the paint mode from merge to multiply. This will allow us to see the area that is covered that overlaps uh, both mask one and mask two, but mask three is not impacted in this case. So now let's come to mask three and then do the same thing. Let's change the paint mode from merge to multiply. Now, as you can see, this area is going to get smaller because this is is going to impact now both mask one, two, and three itself. So the order of the notes definitely makes a difference here. All right, guys, enough of this technical mumble jumble. Let's look at a couple examples to truly understand what we can do using multipoly. Okay, so in our first example here, we are going to bring a text node and then uh, write three percentages in the text box. And then we're going to right click and then in the menu, select the character level styling. Now let's go to the modifiers tab. We're going to select each individual one and then move them to a different part of the screen. So now let's bring multi-poly masking node and then connect it to the text node. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to check the invert option here. This will allow us now to create a mask around the 20%. So once that's done, let's uncheck invert and then we're going to create a duplicate here. Uh, and then we're going to move this new copy uh, above that 50% and then let's create another duplicate. And then we're going to move this one above that 80%. Now let's come back to the text note, go to layout, and then we're going to set a keyframe here for center and then bring it under the masks. And then we're going to move over a few frames and then just bring it back into the mask. So now if we were to look at this animation, guys, you can see now we have created uh, uh, three uh, different masks for these three percentages all within just one note. Now, one thing also you can do if you want to get fancy is to uh, come back to the text node and then let's go to the uh, modifiers tab here. And then let's uh, bring up the character level styling, go to the text box, right click and then select the follower. And then we're going to first of all, change the delay here to one frame. And then we're going to go to the transform tab and then we're going to change transform to words. And then let's uh, go ahead and set a keyframe uh, for offset. 
And then uh, we are going to uh, move over a few frames and then we're going to set another keyframe uh, for the offset setting here. Now let's go back to the first one and then we're just going to bring it uh, under the masks. So now as you can see, we have a staggered animation, which looks really cool. Okay, so for our second example here, we're gonna do a little bit of text write-on effect. So uh, let's just write a letter T here and then bring the size all the way up. And now let's bring our uh, multi-poly uh, masking node and then connect it to the text node. So the first thing we're gonna do here is to uh, check the invert option. Uh, so let's do that. And then we're going to just draw a, a straight polyline here uh, across the middle part of the, uh, the top portion of the letter T. And then uh, let's uh, first of all uncheck uh, invert and then let's also uncheck solid. Uh, so now let's just uh, uh, start to bring up the border width until it kind of fills up that uh, top part of the letter T here. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to change the line type to linear uh, as well. So now we are going to use the length setting here to uh, create uh, our animation. So now with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, create a keyframe here and then let's move over a few frames and then let's just bring it back up to one. So now we uh, have an animation for uh, kind of the top part of this letter. Okay, so now let's add a new polygon masking node and then we're going to once again check the invert option first and then we're going to draw a, a straight line, straight vertical line here for the second part of the letter T. And then uh, let's uh, once again, uh, uncheck invert, uncheck uh, solid. And then uh, we are going to just start to bring up the border width until it covers that entire part. And then uh, let's change the line type uh, once again back to uh, linear. And then uh, we're going to use the length setting here to create animation. But this time around, you will see that there is a little bit of an uh, imperfection here. So to fix this, we are going to zoom in and then uh, let's change the line animation to uh, modify only first of all. And then let's just uh, move this point of the line down uh, ever so slightly. So now this is looking way much better. All right, so with length setting right now at a zero, we're gonna come to the end of the first part of this animation, set a keyframe for the length setting, and then move over a few more frames and then bring it back up to one. So now, as you guys can see, we have now a, uh, a very cool text write on effect. Again, all this is done using just one uh, multi-poly node. Now, one thing I'm still noticing is that there is a bit of a gap between the top and the bottom part of the letter. So I'm just going to move this up ever so slightly. So now this is looking way much better. All right, guys, as you can see, we now just created a text write on effect for a single letter for different parts of the letter using just one multi poly node uh, it's a very powerful node uh, indeed all right guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always i will see you next time